Hey everybody, welcome back to the Simeon Jimmy Treehouse podcast. I've gotten a lot of comments saying that my intros are too loud. People are using them as alarm clocks, evidently. So you know what? We're going to mellow out, keep it nice and quiet, NPR style. Welcome to the Treehouse. My name is Simeon Jimmy, joined as always by Aggie Eggman Rodriguez. Oh, you know, it's a pleasure as always to be here in the one and only tree house. You know, I really feel the serenity, the calmness, the peace, the one witness with nature. It's good, YouTube. And also joining us uh, because we just filmed an Is It Kino with him and I uh, wanted him to join this for no reason. We also have Erich McSoy. Hello there. This is ASMR Erich. I'm going to rub my hands together. I was hoping you would just start screaming at the top of your lungs to, you know, drive home the, uh, you know, the rule of threes here, but... Yeah, that happens at the end of the ASMR. You just shout as loudly as possible. <laughs> Smart. Yeah, after I'm done scratching my beard in the mic, I'll start screaming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Aggie and I, we have recently made a video. You might have seen it. It's called Wheel of Cursed Meals 5. And Iggy, this will be coming out the day after the wheel premieres on the Simi and Jimmy channel. So we're just going to assume you've already seen that video and we're going to spoil the whole thing and uh, talk about our misadventures and perhaps the aftermath of the wheel and all that jazz. Uh, Iggy and Erich, are you guys ready for this? Yeah, oh, I'm so sure. ready. Are you, are you sure, Aggie? Because you might have some PTSD flashbacks. You certainly suffered more than Biggs and I combined <laughs> in this video. Well, I think the only thing that's really giving me PTSD flashbacks is that I still have this, uh, you know, 15% full bottle of Everclear on my computer desk from uh, <laughs> the, the night after I came back from visiting and I had to give my people on the internet a good fun time and it got a little too fun I think uh, but either way yeah, yes sir what was the story behind that because we in in the wheel the idea of doing one shot of Everclear was considered like very difficult I failed at it you like choked it down horrifically for like two minutes but then you take the rest of the bottle home and you drink like 80% of it in a single sitting like, what the fuck? How did you get it all down? And how did you keep it? Well, I guess you didn't keep it down, but what's going on? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I think it's because I had like three or four cans and bottles of mixers and I kind of just went through it. So it was like, you know, just multiple beverages, uh, you know, where the alcohol was like, I mean, usually the kind of mixed drinks I would mix, this goes back to when I was in high school because this is just how we decided to do it because we never wanted to taste anything. We just wanted to get messy. So we would have like a, a mug that had like 40% liquor and like 60% Mountain Dew or something and we would just choke it down enough <laughs> that it was like tolerable. I was kind of doing a little bit more like 15 to 20%, let's say, let's say like 15% liquor and like 85% mixer. I was putting it on ice, you know, so like uh, it was it was able to go down. And the thing is that I had this straw for my $1 McDonald's Diet Coke. <laughs> so I had like the straw and the ice so it's like the ice is in there it's chilling it's kind of making it a little more palatable and i'm just kind of like going into the straw just like inhaling the whole thing and then pouring another one and so that's how i was able to decimate you know roughly 500 milliliters in a, in like a four hour period oh yeah and once you're three shots of ever clear in it's really gonna fuck your brain enough that the next 20 shots you won't even notice right well, that is very true because what it was, and this isn't the first time this has happened for me, but I remember looking at the clock and I think I've been streaming for about two hours and 50 minutes, which is about two hours before the stream actually ended. And that was like the last thing I remember seeing. And then all of a sudden I just wait. It, it was like uh, it just your mind. It just is like a, a, a jump cut. So it's like all of a sudden <laughs> I just was like on the floor. The next I'm looking morning. Around. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like look, look, looking around. Don't remember anything. And I'm like, oh, no, shit. So I'm kind of, you know, I feel myself, make sure that, like, you know, I didn't break any bones or whatever. That's happened before. <laughs> kind of, you know, feel myself down, kind of, like, look around, make sure there's not any holes in the wall or nothing totally broken or whatever. Kind of start to assess the situation a little bit. And, of course, this was before. I did this after I worked 10 hours and I was going into work another 10-hour shift. Right. Well, actually, speaking of which, no, it was Saturday morning. So then we did the, the podcast that morning, too. So I woke yeah, up at, like, you recorded She-Hulk, like, right after waking up from this horrible blackout, hungover nightmare. You wake up, immediately record She-Hulk, and then go back to work. Did you take like, hours. a super, super, super hero syndrome or something? Superhero serum? 
to uh, be no. like this hardy what like how fuck? captain america can you know drink 10 gallons of booze and it'll you know go through yeah, his body just what fine the fuck I'm uh, I'm partially Native American and I drink V8 juice, so I think those oh. two things combined, you know, we have like <laughs> the resistance that you. builds it up. Resistance. Uh, Erich, have you ever tried Everclear? No, I, I would be interested to. You no, know, no, you should not. Be. <laughs> it's literally just rubbing alcohol that yeah. you can drink without. I was going to say without getting poisoned, but no, you get fucking poisoned. Yeah, you will get poisoned. It's horrific. I would try a little bit of it. Why? Why would you want to? <laughs> Just, just to say I did. What is, uh, do you have any blackout drunk stories, E. Rich? Because we hear this from me and Aggie all the time, but we, we don't know about E. Rich's uh, dark sure devices. I can't remember which one, which well, that, episode That's we a good recorded. story if you can't remember it. What, what, yeah, whatever episode that we recorded uh, where I was super fucking drunk, I'm fairly certain that I blacked out during that. Wait, on Is It Kino? Yeah, on Is It Kino. Was that like years, years ago? ago? Oh, okay. Yeah. You yeah. got blackout drunk on an Is It Kino and you don't remember what happened. Yeah, but I I also, like Eggy, had to wake up and go to work the next morning with a yes. massive hangover and I, I vomited several times at work. And this is when you were a teacher? No, 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 no. Oh. Uh, actually, I was a sub, but it wasn't subbing that I the job I was going to. Uh, they needed to get a sub for their sub because he was fucking <laughs> wasted. <laughs> I, I wish uh, I could remember which is a keto that was. I don't remember you getting blackout drunk on an episode. I'm sure Asperger did that all the time. Yeah, I I was fucking super wasted. Holy shit. But have you ever uh, you know, woken up not sure how you got there with like a broken leg like Aggie has done? A few no, times? no. Thankfully, I haven't gotten that bad now. Well, after one sip of Everclear, you're going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty close. Yeah, it's it, it's it's potent, that is for sure. <laughs> now, Eggy, you took this stream down, right? So nobody can go back and... Because I did happen to see a few clips of it before it was unlisted, and uh, you are <laughs> vomiting a lot on camera, which I thought was, you know, very tasteful. <laughs> uh, well, no, YouTube didn't take it down. It's not blocked. I just unlisted it because, you know, it's... I, I would if I ever have a time where you know there's a stream where I'm taking my clothes off and puking or whatever <laughs> what I like to do is I kind of like to just um let myself uh, and if it's not if it isn't already taken down by YouTube I like to let myself get a couple more streams or a couple more videos ahead of it and then I'll like bring it back up because then it just kind of is like a part of the mass of stream archive stream you know everything like that to where you know it's not going to be necessarily like a standout thing that's unfamiliar people are going to come to gawk at because that's kind of happened before where people are just like oh my goodness this freak he's well, look at this freak and uh you know sometimes it hurts my feelings i just like to have a good time you know it is what it is now you can't you can't listen to them because you're the one who's partying you're the one who has a hundred people watching you get drunk at 3 a.m on a weekday okay we don't need these fucking random chuds in the comment section judging us on our lifestyle choices just because we're more entertaining than they are I mean, that is very true. Uh, and I can also say, you know, I had much sobriety this year. I'm a hardworking, fully employed person now. I'm on my way to a lifetime of uh, extreme success. So I, get, I deserve to enjoy uh, an entire bottle in one sitting of the world's strongest <laughs> alcohol from time to time. You're a contributing member of society. You That's deserve right. anything you want. Have you thought about now that you like have a steady paycheck that and you're making that those big uh, overtime bucks? Have you thought about hiring somebody, you know, maybe 10 bucks a stream to uh, like make a super cut of each stream you do so you can upload like, uh, you know, a 20 or 30 minute video of all the best parts of your eight hour drunken shenanigans? <laughs> Because well, if you uploaded like a YouTube short that is just like a super cut of you vomiting on that stream, I think that could be pretty successful. Well, the thing is, is that uh, there was a fan who uh, I didn't even pay him. He just started doing it of his own volition because he wanted to have uh, you know some nice uh, memories of the streams. And I think he did about 13 or 14 hours total between, you know, like a dozen episodes of Supercuts. Uh, which I promoted, and pretty much uh, just nobody cared. Like they just oh. nobody went and watched it. Was the channel uh, so. called Bite Size Eggy? <laughs> uh, no, uh, it it's a, be. A, a great man named Eddie Carlton. He, you know, he's even a musician. He made like Eggy music and stuff like that. But basically, I just came to realize, you know, uh, which is also kind of part of the reason why I was fine with kind of falling back on just getting like a regular job again. 
like the people who follow me really like what I do and there's pretty much no appeal to anybody that doesn't already follow me is is what it seems like as far as I could tell because I've had opportunities to branch out and be you know uh, involved in bigger things and it, it just nobody really cares they're like they look at me and they're like yeah, I don't really care about that guy and so it's like okay well I have fun doing it you know I do what I like I wasn't necessarily ever trying to you know, be the biggest thing, but you know, I, I find what works for me. Well, Aggie, I'll, I'll let you know, when we do collaborations on this channel and on my main channel, uh, anytime you're in a video with me, I will exclusively get comments about how people are excited to see you and like you were the highlight of the video. They thought you were so funny and then they're just like shitting on me, you know, so <laughs> like this new video of uh, Vincent the Atheist becoming homeless and it's called, well, I guess I'm homeless now. Evidently, a lot of people were hoping I actually was homeless and they wanted to see me suffer because it got like 40,000 views in two days. And all the comments either say, oh, based Aggie, oh, I love Aggie's Jewish character in this video. And then every other comment is, damn, I wish you really were homeless. Fuck you, you <laughs> piece of shit. So, like, if, as far as I know, people love you more than they love me. Well, much love to the fans. You know, we never stop doing what we do with them things. You know, maybe uh, the, the so-called mainstream, they're just not ready to see a real gamer in his elements, but that's okay because whether they are or not, there's still uh, many dozens of hours, uh, many hundreds that are still stashed away on hard drives, uh, really in total probably thousands of hours if I really tallied it up of a gamer doing his thing that was enjoyed by people all over the whole world. So even if it was, a, if it was too much for the world to take, you know what, I take it for what it is and I don't regret any of it. Uh, if we're going to go back to discussing our adventures with the wheel number five, I think we have to start at the beginning with you had to eat the Mama Bird PB&J. And this video, as we're recording this podcast, it has not come out publicly yet, but all the uh, patrons at patreon.com slash monkey and all the people on the exclusive Discord, they have seen the video. And the main takeaway from their comments so far is that the... The Mama Bird PB and J is uh, so disgusting, and like their toes were curling, and they just they could not look away, you know. But they did not want to stare at it. Uh, that was like the highlight of the video for them. So I'm glad that we began the video with that, because otherwise they might have uh, lost interest. But uh, can you explain to me what that is? Is it somebody? Well, hey, you go up? ahead, because I want to hear you uh, talk us through oh. this. Now, this is probably maybe more like the PG-13 Mama Bird PB&J because we could have done it where, uh, you know, the elements were consumed entirely by certain oh. participants and then vomited, but it wasn't that. Oh, uh, it was, so basically, I landed on it, and so Mr. Bigsington and Mr. Jimmy each respectively chewed up mouthfuls of peanuts and red grapes in their mouth <laughs> to a nice chewed-up consistency, and then basically... Uh, you know, expelled uh, oh. with all saliva and all the inside mouth cultures oh. onto slices of bread. I did try to get as juice. much saliva on there as possible because I, cool. I it helps it go down. So much of Big's mouth inside of you and my uh, mouth. Well, the thing is, I could. I mean, I've obviously never tasted the inside of either of these men's mouths. Uh huh. Uh, but other you know, than when we went to go see Bros. <laughs> I, I did have a girlfriend once, so I know what it's like to kiss somebody, and I know people's mouths have like a certain taste. Uh, what did mine it, taste it like, other than grapes and peanuts? <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know which. I I, I, don't, I couldn't differentiate between which other person's mouth, but there was definitely a, an unfamiliar, not my mouth taste uh, <laughs> in the gooey goo in between that bread. <laughs> the gooey goo. Everidge, let me ask you this: When you uh -huh. are making a sandwich and you pull out that loaf of bread. And you yeah. have that end piece. Do you ever consume that or do you just throw it in the garbage? No, I, I use that. You do? Okay. So yeah. I'm in the minority here. I never use the end piece of bread. Uh, I've never I like tried to eat I it. I like crusts. Okay. Well, Eggie used the end piece in the sandwich. And personally, that was the most <laughs> disgusting part for me. <laughs> you know, I, I just made uh, lunch for work yesterday because I realized that uh, sometimes I don't have enough stuff prepared so i had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and it was three slices of bread one was a crust piece so what i did was i had peanut butter jelly peanut butter like a big mac but it was like a pb and j oh, hell yeah style and that was pretty dank yeah that's another dank food hack for you just stack right. on more bread and more peanut butter you can fit it 
Uh, so what uh, was anything in particular going through your mind as you're trying to shove this sandwich into your mouth? Well, you know, I stayed focused. I was like, focus on just, you know, imagining myself in a situation where I'm just being served like a an artisan PB&J at a restaurant. It's rustic. It's something I'm not used to, but I can like, okay, I'm, I'm putting it together in my mind to kind of help myself tolerate it. Uh, th there was times when I was biting into it and there were just like pooled globs of saliva and I'm looking at it. You know, you could see in the video, maybe you could see that I'm like looking at what I'm eating and you could see the bubbles of like spit that were, you know, mixed in with this. How do you and, know that uh, it wasn't just the grape juice uh, forming bubbles that look like spit? How do you know it was spit? Well, I mean, that could be the case, uh, but I think it was spit. <laughs> yeah, well. uh, I could be wrong, but that was my intuition telling me that, yeah, that's spit. Uh, so that was probably the most off-putting thing. And it's like, if you get in your own head about what, you know, like you see the on the bread, you see all that come together. If you're putting that in your head when you're doing it, that's what's going to trip you up. That's what's going to set you up for failure. So if you kind of just push that out of your mind and say, let me clean this plate, let me scrape up the peanut chewings after I uh, gorge this uh, monstrosity into my face and, uh, you know, make sure it's 100% clear like a speed run, you know, but I didn't land on the hormone pills either way. Kind of like <laughs> how some guys w during sex, if they want to last longer, they'll think about like baseball or their own grandmother, which would make, <laughs> make it would make me come faster, to be honest. You know, <laughs> thought of my grandma playing baseball. Oh, man, I'd be spurting all over the place. But uh, did, when you're eating the sandwich, did your mind, you know, did you try to imagine it was like a delicious Jimmy John's sandwich or or do you just accept it for what it is? And E. Rich, if you're fucking typing, at least mute your goddamn microphone, you piece of shit. <laughs> God damn it, I thought I was needed, my bad. Yeah, it's okay. D did you uh, uh, imagine it was a, a fancy meal while you were eating? I mean, I had to take it for what it was. It's crunchy, it's peanutty, it's it's grapey. Uh, fuck grape, YouTube. That's right. Um, <laughs> It's, it's, um, it, I had to face some facts about it, but see, that's the thing of it too, is that if you, um, make certain concessions in your mind, it'll make it easier for you to kind of block certain things out. I think they call this coping. Uh, you know, you're like, okay, that's what I'm eating, but I'll, I'll, I'll focus on the, yes, it's just grapes. Yes, it's just peanuts. Yes, it's just bread. Just gotta eat this. I'm going to focus on that truth because my mind knows that's what's up and that's real. And I can leave out some of the, uh, less favorable aspects kind of like when you go to mcdonald's you eat your tasty chicken nugget and you're like oh this is pretty good with that sauce you're not thinking about how like chicken carcasses were put into a wood chipper and like <laughs> mushed into a fine goo that could be uh bleached with i don't know when i think of that or whatever when i think of that famous gif of like all the baby chicks being thrown into like a wood chipper oh. and turned into goo whenever i'm thinking about that while eating my mcnuggets it does make it more flavorful and tasty for me yeah you guys don't think about the pink mcnugget paste the exists. No, like the, the suffering of those baby terrified chickens. You know, it's like adrenochrome. Like the fear makes it more tasty. Eggie, <laughs> <laughs> well, we forgot you know to what? mention that we did basically film the entire first round with the microphone turned off. So there is 40 minutes of bonus footage that will be coming out on this channel tomorrow. The, uh, the Patchy's wife cut. And <laughs> Biggs did have to eat five transgender hormone pills. And it basically it had no effect on him at that time, oh, wow. but because uh, obviously, you know, I, how's it going to affect him, you know, five minutes after he takes them. But I do have an update from Biggs himself. Um, oh, he texted me. Let's see if I can find where he said this. Uh, hmm. Where the fuck did it go? Did he say his tits got smaller? He it was not good. <laughs> where the <laughs> fuck did this? Maybe, oh, it must have been on Snapchat. But basically, Biggs said that. uh a few days later, he was experiencing hot flashes, and uh, he was like getting cold very easily. So he thinks he actually is turning into a woman. Oh, bigs bros, big sisters, we got too cocky. Yeah, I thought all the insulation of his body would protect him, but those five pills have him freezing in like 70 degree weather. Now, it's how much are you supposed to take at one time? Did it he says, like... do not take more than one per day. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he no took wonder. five. Holy shit. Damn. <laughs> and then it didn't even make it into the video because the microphone <laughs> was fine. <laughs> so Sometimes he... you got to suffer for the art that nobody sees. <laughs> yeah. That's just how it is. Yeah, it's fucked up. Uh, Aggie, you also had to do the uh, the healthy s'more. Uh, was that 
as bad as Biggs tried to make it out to be? Uh, I didn't think it was really that bad. Like, I mean, like I was uh, said to Patchy's wife, I used to work at this gas station years ago. We had to fill the bean hoppers to grind the fresh ground coffee. So it was the roasted beans. Uh, but I used to uh, snack on the roasted coffee beans. Uh, so oh, it's yeah. kind of it's kind of like uh, eating a, a cigarette or something. It's just very <laughs> bitter. It's very bitter. It will because tobacco's roasted too, right? Something like that, I think. Um, it's, it's just this very strong, bitter flavor from that baking chocolate. Similar to eating like uh, some coffee beans or something like that. Uh, I am not at all offended by that bitter flavor. And then the other aspects of it weren't particularly heinous or off-putting. I think just that bitterness was probably the strongest thing coming through to me, um, which is why I felt because I did one normal and then I put one in the microwave to give it a more of a s'morey, melty consistency. I thought that the one that was in the microwave was actually less uh, intense. I felt like the melted collagen marshmallow sugar-free collagen marshmallow mixed with the bacon chocolate kind of uh just a little bit of dullness on that bitter uh flavor but oh yeah but I, did. I, I didn't the, have the, a problem with it the bite of bacon chocolate i had uh, i did not like that <laughs> that was very very bitter when you say you were eating like raw coffee beans was that because you enjoyed the flavor or was it like to get some caffeine out of it or just because you were bored well, at that time, I used to smoke uh, unfiltered cigarettes, so like that was around the time when I made such videos as Black Pill and back in that, those days. So I smoked unfiltered Lucky Strikes, uh, which had a strong flavor. I, I like that, and I would drink very dark beer. I like that strong flavor, so, uh, you know, I part of it was, okay, there's a few coffee beans that are still left in the bag or whatever, and the, then the hopper's full. Um, <clears throat> maybe one fell on the counter or whatever. If it's just going to get thrown in the trash, why not, you know, waste not, want not. And I, I felt it also had a little bit of caffeine going on, like so that sharp, bitter flavor at four o'clock in the morning when I've already been working since 9 p.m. That kind of give me a kick in the pants, give me a, you know, a little something, something to get me boosted up. So for a couple reasons, uh, I just a little bit of I liked it, a little bit of, hey, it's there. I just never really had a problem with it personally. Well, my recommendation to the audience, if you ever need a quick and disgusting a caffeine boost uh, without uh, the use of cocaine. Uh, when you're like making a, like a black tea and you have the tea bag and it floats in the water for two minutes, uh, just stick the entire tea bag into your mouth while it's all wet and suck on it, and you will just get like 10 billion <laughs> milligrams of caffeine straight into your brain. Uh, it's not particularly good. It is extremely bitter, like all these other things we're talking about. But the two times I did it, you know, my brain was hardwired for about an hour. <laughs> so, you know, it's a much easier than just drinking the tea. I'll definitely have to try that. I'm a much of a caffeine enjoyer, so I'm always looking for the next rush, the next big fix. I also saw that uh, the Sonic flavor of G Fuel, like the G Fuel that just has Sonic the Hedgehog on it, uh, evidently the one can has three times more caffeine than one can of Red Bull. One of those. Which is shocking. Uh, did not do much to me. What? Really? I, I don't understand. Sometimes I will have a single cup of coffee and I'll be fucking wired. And sometimes nothing like massive amounts of caffeine have no effect hmm. on me. Maybe yeah. you have uh, numbed your brain to it. You <laughs> had too Very much. well could be. You had to move on to cocaine. I said as my uh, my eye is twitching here. <laughs> well, Everidge, speaking of delicious recipes and delicious flavors, uh, yeah, Aggie and I both had to consume something called Everclear and cheese. W would you care to guess what that uh, dank drink combo might be? Everclear and cheese, you say? Yeah. Um, is it Gruyere? What's that? That's kind of cheese. <laughs> Oh, no, it's, uh, you know, macaroni and cheese, and instead of using oh, cheese, you have that you know, cheese powder. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you're yeah, putting that in Everclear? You're right. Jesus Christ is correct, because, yeah, we did mix Everclear with uh, the cheese powder. It was my my meal. I swallowed it, and it immediately came back up, vomited all over the place, and then Aggie decided to steal it. Uh, Aggie, how did you keep that down? Uh, well, it was tough, uh, because... Basically, it is extremely harsh. Straight Everclear is hard. I literally feel the inside of my throat like like burning away, like melting away as it was going down. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I think you might catch this in the video. I did retch, so like it goes down, I swallow it, and then I'm like, 
but you know kept it down and i kind of had to sit there and just steady myself because it's just like this feeling of like sulfuric acid you can just feel it like ro- like just going down your throat like into your guts just completely causing total disrepair uh it's very unpleasant and i would not recommend it uh, but if you like i said once again i kind of just focused it took some deep breaths made sure that it was going the direction i wanted it to go because it has kind of given me a little bit of a problem at first but once i felt it kind of going down into my stomach and it felt kind of like um a combination it was like you know, there's a movement Pokemon called Ice Punch. It kind of, you felt like yourself getting punched in the gut, but it was kind of like a cold feeling down there as well. I'm not sure if that's healthy, but hmm. in any case, it stayed down. And let me just say, as the person who performed the worst in the video, and I got dead last uh, in terms of the score, it does bring me a, a little bit of comfort to know that you also had a lot of trouble with something that I failed at. So it's like, okay, well, if the alcohol expert even thought it was hard, then maybe I'm not as big of a pussy as I feel like. And that yeah, was my I, first uh, go through with Everclear, so I was not prepared. I think the only thing that could have made it worse is if uh, there's a drink called Prairie Fire, which is vodka and hot sauce. I think if we'd made an, an Everclear Prairie Fire with that ghost pepper sauce, I think that would have probably been undoable. Do you ever drink uh, Prairie Fire, <laughs> E-Rich? No, never heard of it before. Uh, you're more of a, uh, what's that other like spicy cinnamon drink that Fireball? You ever drink that? Fireball? Oh, tons of it. Yeah, let's. we should all uh, just get a you know big thing of Fireball and see who can finish the whole thing fastest. It's definitely going to be Eggy. No question. Yeah, he is the Chug Master. Uh, what did we have to eat in round two? Hmm. You you had to do oh. the, the spicy sucker. That I did. And uh, I tell you what, that spicy sucker made my spice hole pucker for multiple days afterwards. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Wait, are you still having spicy shits to this day? Uh, no, but so we did it Tuesday. I had to work Thursday. Uh... I think it was probably until at least Saturday that I was feeling it. So you're at work I, shitting the most painful shit of your life and getting paid for it? Well, the thing of it is, is that I'm doing a good amount of moving around at this undisclosed job of mine. Uh, I'm doing a pretty good amount of, of moving around. It's a 10 hour shift and it, it was kind of more of like a, you know, when you when you had that we had that hot sauce at the one point, and you just feel it around your mouth. It kind of lingers. It was like that, except for my asshole. So basically, <laughs> I just had like an irritated, burning asshole oh. for like multiple days. Oh, uh, now I'm gonna Christ. assume I'm gonna assume it was from the sucker. I think it lines up. I don't think anything else is going on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't we did that... see the Bros movie around that same time, so maybe that's why your <laughs> asshole was in so much pain. <laughs> Uh, no, but it, it felt, yeah, I just couldn't, I was like, oh, you know, I'm like, uh, I, I felt like maybe I had something wrong with me or whatever, but no, it all kind of ended up lining up that I was just, uh, took its sweet time, which makes sense because unlike these other hot, I don't do a lot of hot stuff challenges necessarily, uh, but this one is basically, it's really just like a slow drip of pure heated syrup, like pure fire syrup, <laughs> basically just, you know, slowly draining through your body over a five minute period. So I guess it really hung around in my guts for a minute. Well, we did do a video on the Simeon Jimmy channel doing the Packy one chip challenge and uh, Wings of Redemption actually oh God. just did that a few days ago. Uh, in that video, Aggie like looks like he's going to die. He's like <laughs> screaming bloody murder. What would you say was worse? The one chip challenge or the toe of Satan? Uh, definitely the uh, one chip challenge. For really? Sure. Yeah, no doubt. What the fuck? In Wings of Redemption, he also acted like he had to go to the hospital, like he was in severe pain. And if I recall, I don't know, I think I meditated the pain away in that video. So maybe I should, I still have a toe of Satan myself. Maybe I should just like you know, do it on stream and see how it compares. Both of you, both of you did the one chip challenge? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So at, how long did the pain last for? And at what point were you kind of like, OK, it's getting better? Like, I think I can handle it. I, I think it was intense pain for about two minutes after I ate it. But then I, I really like, you know, I crossed my legs. I started humming and meditating. Uh -huh. And, you know, for me, the pain, you know, kind of just went away. Whereas Aggie, I think I have like 20 minutes of footage of him like <laughs> bleeding out. Well, I did, because the thing is, I drank like, ended up drinking like half a gallon of milk trying to like cure yeah. the uh, <laughs> the heat, which it, it kind of worked, but the combination of eating that 
and then drinking all that milk, then I did vomit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did the vomit help? Like, uh, actually, it did. Yeah, because and, yeah. I would like to remind Mr. Jimmy that I, we did this on uh, New Year's Eve. And as I recall, he was not feeling too well the next day or so. Oh, yeah, no, my, been... yeah, I, I had some spicy poops the next day for sure. But as far as mm-hmm. like mouth pain goes, I, mm. I think it went away pretty quick. Wow. Okay. And I think Wings like posted 30 minutes later and said, I feel better. So, you know, it's would not you like... both do it again? Yeah, I would do it again. Wow. Okay. I mean, I, what I mean... I'm saying right now is, you know, maybe in a future live stream, I will uh, eat the toe of Satan and uh, maybe even that nitro bear if Aggie doesn't mind me eating his candy. Yeah. It was, uh, I think originally, I think the man in question who was gracious enough to gift me that, Lewis? I think he found me. Yeah, I think he found me through you, if I'm not mistaken. So I think it would only be right, you know, if you would like to. I think that that's definitely an upvote. Uh, from my end. And he's also the guy who sent me the uh, like six pack of hot sauce that Vincent is drinking out in the woods mm. in the new video. So he loves sending us spicy shit. Cool. Are you hey. saying you would not try the one chip challenge, E. Rich? Uh, I probably would. Yeah. I mean, like, it's it, only it, like 10 bucks. If I bucks. have enough hype up to it. Yeah. You know, give me a whole bag of them. Like, give me like the <laughs> like the fun size Doritos bag with like thirty of those chips. I'll try it. Fuck it. I'll just shove uh-huh. them all in. But yeah, the next day, yeah, severe stomach pain, spicy shits. Uh, so in that in that way, it's not worth it. Uh, what what else did we do on this wheel? I, I want to talk about the stuff that Biggs did, but he's not here to uh, give us his first hand. Take side of it, it. Yeah. it's too bad e rich do you want to pretend to be biggs and describe what uh what it was like eating what did biggs have to do in round two um hmm. that, was, that was the sleepy chicken i believe he had for round uh, two. yeah mistaken. yeah he had to we, we grilled up it's the new tiktok trend e rich where you're you, uh-huh, okay you cook yeah I, i'm i'm not with it i'm not okay hip. so it's uh you cook a piece of chicken and it's marinated in sleeping medicine, like ZZZ. Oh, 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 oh. I, I know. Like cool chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Biggs, uh, he ate the ZZZ quill chicken. And wow. Ate, yeah. So what Pretty. did you think of it, Biggs? Uh, yeah, it was great. I immediately fell asleep and I had terrible, horrific dreams. Uh, after we were done filming that scene and like we took like a 10 minute break, Biggs was like genuinely talking about how it was actually delicious and like it was just <laughs> it was grape flavored chicken and mm-hmm. he said he would eat it again like he genuinely you can, enjoyed it you can also dream walk into a chicken which sounds pretty cool <laughs> uh, i think that's what I, but after we were done filming all of uh-huh. us went out to texas roadhouse to celebrate as you do yep. Uh, we, yep. did we do that after the 48 hour film e rich yeah i think we did yeah, yeah after we film a big difficult thing we always go to texas roadhouse and by the time we got to texas roadhouse biggs was like dead like i don't know <laughs> he might have said three words the whole time we were there i oh think the God. zzz quill was getting to him <laughs> he was basically Good passed words. out um i would like to issue a correction after wheel four we actually went to that other restaurant because that's when i figured out i couldn't taste anything i was we, oh, i got this drink it was like a soda jerk and i got a drink and i'm like oh this doesn't taste very good but where whatever. did we go uh hickory what's it whatever it's called oh right? hickory park yeah that's an yeah. ames thing not particularly yeah. good <laughs> all the locals love it uh i only go there when i'm that forced sucks. to is it overpriced what's the no it's just yeah it's, such- it's bland Oh. Yeah, they don't just throw a million pounds of MSG into the food to make it flavorful, <laughs> like all my favorite fast food. That's right. You know, it's like American home cooking, you know. <laughs> if I wanted my grandma's cooking, I'd drive 40 minutes to her house. But <laughs> uh, what did I fail at in round two? I, I can't even remember. And I just spent like uh. a whole weekend editing the video. And actually, and I'm kind of upset that you did because it was so delicious. The condiment, uh, uh, the capitalism stew. Yes, capitalism stew. Yeah, Erich, would you like to guess what capitalism stew is? Um, is it just everything that you have on hand? Yeah, a- any condiments you can find in the house. You, oh, just, you boil it and mix it together on the stovetop. And, Fuck. Uh, Patchy's wife was under the impression it tasted exactly like Chick-fil-A sauce, which I... Oh, damn. I disagree completely because after about eight spoonfuls I vomited all of it I vomited up my entire guts into the sink like not just the soup everything that was in there had to come out uh Aggie and Biggs only had like one spoonful each you know the first one was just fine but once you get 
<laughs> about eight ounces of this shit inside you, it's hard <laughs> to keep it down. Yeah, that's pretty true. I think maybe we could have, uh, but I don't know. I, just, I took one tablespoon of everything. I, you know, I mean, I don't. I could, maybe I could have done like a half tablespoon or something. Maybe we could have had a reduced portion. It might have been a little too much, but either way, I thought it had a similar flavor profile to like a tomato bisque. Mmm, interesting. What do, you, what, do you, what do you guys think the lethal dose of capitalism soup is? For me, it was if about like eight big up, spoonfuls. If, yeah, but if you throw it up at eight, then how many do you have to take to die? Hmm. Probably if I finished the whole bowl, I would not have made it through the rest of the video. But I do wish, instead of eating it as a soup, I wish I would have had it in like a glass or just anything other than eating it with a spoon. I think if I would have just tried to chug it very quickly, I could have gotten it all down and then gotten yeah. the point before I vomited. Uh, but the fact that I'm eating it one small spoonful at a time, you know, like you have to... You have to choose to put each and every next spoonful into your mouth. And it got to the point where uh, my body was choosing not to do that. So, uh, I, I'm surprised you didn't try to steal that one, Aggie, but I guess you had so many points that at that point it didn't even matter. I felt like, you know, I knew I enjoyed it. I just didn't want to, uh, you know, basically uh, be too try hard and be like, oh, I got to be on top of everything, you know. I'm like, well, I know I enjoy it, but... You know, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna face my own battle, my own demons, my own curse. Could it be that Chick Fil A sauce actually is just every other sauce mixed together? Is that With their an secret entire, recipe? An entire cup of uh, pu pudding that Kino Corner left in the fridge for eight months. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that was what gave it that rich, uh, savory goodness. That yeah, rich that's cocoa what undertone made me fucking freak out because it looked chunky in the. <laughs> in the stove. <laughs> Once it started boil, oh yeah, Erich, we we boiled it by the way, so it was boiling on the stove, and so it's night getting nice and warm. Then Jeez. it was served, uh, garnished with thyme, or was it rosemary? <laughs> I, I think it was garnished with thyme as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it looks. I'm telling you, Gordon Ramsay, uh, he wants to eat this. I don't even oh. know why I have thyme in the fridge. I never bought that shit. <laughs> it might have been in there for a year. I don't even know. <laughs> that was also, well, that was probably when Kino, Kino made that fish. He probably, uh, had, ew. if you still have Kino's pudding, uh, yeah, if you still have Kino's pudding in your fridge, I don't see why, you yeah. know, I mean, it looked fine. It, it, it didn't have any, didn't seem to have anything wrong with it. So I, I would imagine that it's probably <laughs> like, didn't have any reason to toss it. I am also sad that my my giant container of yum yum sauce goes bad this month, and I'm like not even an eighth of the way through it. I, uh, it turns out I'm not eating fried rice as often as I thought I would be when I went to Sam's Club and bought that giant motherfucker. So what Damn. a waste! What a waste of what six whole dollars I spent. And you got two weeks. If you eat it for every single meal, you'll probably get a good dent in it. Yeah, if I eat nothing but yum yum sauce and fried rice, I'll probably be 180 pounds by the end of the week. So that's hey, pretty good. Got to bulk up for the hibernation of the winter. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then finally, we have round three. I finally get my point. Chugging down some uh, mouthwash mixed with orange juice. Surprisingly flavorful and tasty. Uh, I think the mistake was... The idea of the orange juice was after you brush your teeth, the most disgusting thing in the world is orange juice. And I think I thought that would also apply to mouthwash, but really it didn't. Like I didn't get that disgusting, you know, toothpaste, orange juice taste in my mouth. It was kind of just like a normal mixed drink. Like uh, what do they call wow. it? A screwdriver? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think next time somebody has to drink uh, toothpaste mixed with orange <laughs> juice, which I think is a very toxic. Oh shit. You're probably not supposed to ingest uh, too much toothpaste. Uh, and Aki, what was your final challenge? I uh, guzzled a uh, two-year-old bacon lubricant. I oh, yeah, that's right. That's rough. That shit was foul. <laughs> Would you say that was the worst of the night? Or was um, the candy even worse? Well, the thing, here's the thing about the Toe of Satan challenge to me. So, as far as I know, because only it says keep it in your mouth for five minutes. I've watched King Cobra do it, never does all he fail because he's drooling and he's not having it on his tongue. So, as far as I know, you're supposed to have it airtight. You know, you're just drinking all your saliva. You're not, you know, you're just got to keep it locked in for that five minutes on the tongue. And it was definitely scorching the taste buds. To me, that was 
once the afterburn started, because I'm breathing in and it's like it's like my tongue is so fucking scorched that this air traveling around in my mouth was actually really like even more painful, I think. So I don't know. I think uh, Cobra, he might have been doing it the right way. I don't know. Either way, it was in my mouth for five minutes and there wasn't any greater instruction given on the packaging. <laughs> so I felt like it wasn't the worst thing uh, for me personally. Uh, but I think that combined with doing it immediately after the Everclear shots did enhance the burning as well. <laughs> it was like my mouth, everything was raw. Like it just got fucking blasted and scorched by this strong straight liquor uh so it was like it was extra sensitive to all that so i think uh just on its own merits if i did it on an average day i feel like to have satan wouldn't be the worst thing but i think just because of the five minute duration i I did edge out the bacon lube i think the bacon lube was absolutely sickening it was disgusting it was atrocious (laughs) but it it was a quick thing though too so i think that because of the time difference i would say the toe satan was probably the most unpleasant thing that i uh, dealt with when we did wheel of punishment 2 and it was me asperger and rusty cage uh, I believe Asperger had to do the Toe of Satan, but we we didn't really pay attention to the rules, so he only had to do it for one minute, which is like, after watching you do it for five, like, one minute is complete pussy shit. Was it even that bad after one minute, or did it really pick up towards the end? Um, I would say that I felt like the heat it was giving it, it, in my opinion, it kind of ramped up and it kind of held somewhat consistent, but it was like, um, <clears throat> it was just in there and it's like in your mouth and it's just like the, the sucker itself, I think is at a certain level of heat and it's kind of just staying there, but it's sort of like your, the way your mouth is reacting to it. It just becomes like increasingly discomforting, <laughs> um, I, I didn't notice any particular big spikes. It was just kind of like a, you know, oh dear God, please let the suffering end. Like I hit a certain <laughs> amount of pain, and it was just holding that pain, and it's like, oh my goodness, I'm staring at my watch. Did and, any part uh, of you think about giving up and quitting, and just you know not getting one extra point because you were winning anyway, or were you just determined to win no matter what? Well, I, I feel about I think it was about three and a half minutes or so into the five minutes, I actually did become nauseous uh, with it, and I actually felt like I might not be able to. I might actually just. And I was going to still hold it, so what I would have probably happened is what I would have, like, puked out of my nose. Um, <laughs> like sp- like spicy syrup coming out of your nose? That would have hospitalized you. <laughs> like, that's horrible. I just, that was, like, that was the only time I felt shaky in myself. I'm like, I kind of just, you know, the room was a little dizzy. I was feeling a little nauseous. I just kind of was like, you know, I had pressure in my head. And I'm just like, uh, you know just trying to see out that last 90 seconds and I could claim that point. But that was probably my most, you know, uncertain point in the entire wheel, I think. Uh, Back to the shot of bacon-flavored lubricant. E-Rich, do you have any experience with flavored sexual lubricants? Uh, no, I I don't. Are you supposed to, like, be okay with ingesting it, or are you, like, are licking it off? Uh... I don't, Eggy, you said in the video you have experience with this shit, so you tell me, like, are people slobbering this stuff off of somebody's cock, or why does it have to be edible? Uh, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, really, because basically you're applying it. You're yeah, you're not engage. supposed to, Yeah. You're supposed to you're shove your dick in. into something while this is, like, <laughs> helping you get in there, so why would it ever end up in a mouth? <laughs> like, is it for like women who have severe, like they can't produce saliva, but they want to give a blowjob, so they <laughs> they need that help? Like, what oh, is the point? Taste chocolate while I'm doing it. Like, are, is this for men who don't shower, so their dick tastes terrible, and you need to cover up the flavor? <laughs> it's, it's Axe body spray, but for your fucking cock. Yeah, for the taste of your penis. <laughs> I don't know uh, who is this for. <laughs> very confusing. And Aggie, you yeah. said it it tastes like uh, like somebody you know, chewing tobacco and they spit it into a beer can and then left it there fermenting for three days. And then yep. you said that you've accidentally tried that before. So is there a story behind that? Well, you know, I grew up, you know, in the country, a lot of uh, what we call dippers, hashtag dipper nation, and a lot of people that <laughs> very heavy drinkers. So, yeah, absolutely. Over the years, 
It's happened to probably everybody I know. You're at a party Yikes. or whatever. <laughs> Everyone you know. <laughs> you got like, you know, you got a you got a picnic table out in your backyard with like 70 cans of beer on it. You set what you set yours down, you think it's yours, you go back, you pick it up, you know, there's multiple people out there, you know, packing their dips, they're spitting into their empty can or whatever. So you pick it up, it's got weight to it, because it's got that spit in there or whatever. You know, if you're out there or wherever you're at, if you're drunk and not paying attention, you're not gonna see like the tobacco flakes around the uh, you know, the, the mouth of the can. He's like, oh, yeah, that's what I was drinking or whatever. So you pick it up, and yeah, you might get a little taste by accident, and you immediately start vomiting because it's atrocious. So what what experience was worse when you ac- accidentally drank this, you know, chew dip or the, the bacon-flavored lube itself? Like, which one had the worst taste profile? Well... Taste is similar, but the thing is, is that I feel that drinking the accidental spit is worse because it's a very strong reactionary response. You know, like (laughs) you're going, you're about to have your delicious, nice beverage. You're going for it. You grab it and you pick it up. You're expecting a nice flavor, a nice refreshment. You get that. So it's immediately, you know, and the flavor is horrible. It's not meant to be swallowed, which is why it's spit into this thing. So and I think you it's have just probably that somebody else's uh, spit in your mouth too. So I guess that's yeah, what exactly. prepared you for the sandwich. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So it's it's there's just multiple of those like surprise, dis- reaction, disgust uh, versus the uh, okay. Here's this. I'm getting the aroma. That's what it smells like. So mentally, I'm going to prepare myself that that's what that flavor is going to be. It's not going to be an immediate off-putting um, shock to the system. Could have been still, but, you know, my, my brain was starting to load that flavor profile in my head based on that scent, which kind of helped acclimate me to it. And I would imagine lubricant goes down pretty smooth, right? Uh, yeah, it was greasy. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> it might be expired because yeah, oh, I've had sure. that for years. <laughs> it le- definitely left a film on the palate. Oh. Sure. oh, Jesus. Well. Uh, Aggie, now that you've won two wheels in a row and you've probably competed in 10 different cursed meals, uh, what would you say is the worst one overall? Was it from wheel four or wheel five? Like, which uh, meal was the worst? Uh, mm, let me contemplate for just a moment here. While you had the, I... the, the uh, Choco Mac, spicy Choco Mac. I thought that was pretty gnarly. Uh, you had that giant spicy gummy worm. You ate all that Play-Doh. Like, the, is the Play-Doh worse than the fucking toe of Satan? Because I would say it has to be. Yeah, I think we're. I think I'll give the because yeah, that ten shots of espresso. That's just what I drink every day. So that was kind of Choco Mac. That that had its that had its uh, you know high points. <laughs> the spicy gummy was pretty spicy, but I'm I'm thinking that the Play-Doh was definitely what. Uh, had me smashed in it was most definitely what's not up (laughs) that's right well i think that's enough recapping a video that everybody just watched yesterday and we've talked about it for the length of the video itself so you guys ready for some patreon questions sure and uh, these are directed for me and eggy but e rich you can answer them too yeah why not uh random candor wants to know did you ever think you were gay e rich i know you have a lot to say about this one so go ahead uh, not really, no. Oh. Not even watching a Jake Gyllenhaal movie and he takes off his shirt? You don't even get, like, a half chub? Nope. Who's your ce- male celebrity crush? Because mm. mine's Jake Gyllenhaal. I'll be... And Leo DiCaprio. I'll proudly say that on the show. Uh, Oscar Isaac, probably. Oh, yeah, that's a great one. <laughs> but uh, you, you, you would not... Spend an evening with Oscar, you know, if he if he offered, if he was hitting on you. No, no, I okay. just want to hang out with him. That's fair. What about you, Aggy? Male celebrity crush? Well, did you ever think you were okay. gay? Is the question. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, I, I think that's a three nos on this one. I wish <laughs> I was gay because I could use those uh those uh what uh, minority privilege points or whatever the fuck. But no, I'm stuck being a cis straight, straight. white male. You know, it's really hard out there for us. That's right. Uh, Douchebag Williams wants to know, when is Trash Rats International 2? And I think the answer is that we're filming that in either a week or two weeks, and we have a special guest coming in. 
Uh, Florian Himsel, as we all know, he's very anti-Russia. He legitimately <laughs> thinks Vladimir Putin is worse than Hitler, and he has said that on the show before. He that. <laughs> he's very sincere about it. He thinks that Putin is like the greatest uh, European criminal in like the last 200 years. Wow. So, uh, Aki and I actually have a friend who lives here in Iowa, who we went to the state fair with last year. And I guess he's like very pro-Russia and he supports them in this Ukraine war. So we're planning on having a Florian versus Russia guy debate on the next Trash Rats. How does that sound? And that's a rhetorical question to the audience. But yeah, I guess uh, Erich, Erich, would you ever want to come on? Because Trash Rats International, Uh we just talk about like political news stories and then, you know, try to have fun with them. But mostly Florian gets mad and we debate him. Would you ever want to come on and actually get political or is that really not your style? I might, yeah. I'd be down for that. Can you think of any political stances that you and Florian differ on? Because really, <laughs> like the whole point is to argue with Florian. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'd have to get his his, his lowdown, his readout on some things to, Maybe to know what I really disagree with him on. It, it might be fun if you, me, and Florian did like a an episode of the Treehouse where we take the political compass quiz together and then oh, uh, just like debate fun. each question. Yeah, yeah, that would be funny. And Aggie, you could join in for that too, but I don't know if you actually care about politics that much. <laughs> well, basically, uh, I'm a free thinker. Uh, I just listen to whatever the latest musicians who uh, maybe are rappers. I, I hear them out on their political uh, statements on Twitter and Instagram just to kind of feel where the culture is at. Just kind of see what people are finding uh, to be the norm these days. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I don't vote. Um, I don't even partake in democracy at all i'm like hey you know what i'm just doing me so you're not going to death con you're not gonna go death con three on jewish people (laughs) Uh, i think i think i went to a convention called that one time death con uh but death con three on jewish people the convention (laughs) <laughs> uh, you know what if they host it in Israel this year uh, I probably can't go I, I think they told me I can't come back uh, you're banned way. from the nation of Israel that's too bad lots of money I, I over there I, I just love Palestinians too much it is what it is Ethan Klein he said get that shut out of here uh, e. Rich, you were saying something before I rudely cut you off I or do has, not recall I, I guess so. the moment has passed yep uh, Good Draws wants to know, do you guys like like anyone? And then he says he's blushing. Oh, you. Poster. Does anybody have a crush on this guy, Good Draws, who I, I think is brand new because I've never seen him in here before. <laughs> Seems pretty kawaii to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, e- Erich, do you have a crush on anybody? Uh, Other than no. Oscar Isaac. Currently and no. <laughs> oh, Okay, yeah, and Arms is a good one. <laughs> I guess, Aggie, now you can answer who is your celebrity crush. Yeah, let me see. Uh, who? Hmm. <laughs> I just, uh, I don't know if there's really been, I, I browsed the television and film board on the fourth channel, and I just don't know <laughs> if I've really seen any standout ladies lately. Uh, you know, I just don't know if there's really any woman I could think of off the top of my head who I've seen around on social media even or whatever. Because I think about it, you know, sometimes as a man, a songwriter, an artist, sometimes I'm looking for uh, inspiration yeah. in, in the beauty of female, the beauty of woman. And so I think to myself, what beautiful woman is inspiring me? And I go and I think, and I'm like, damn, this is not, none of them. No. Yeah, well, if you guys aren't going to take her, I guess I'll call dibs on Anya Taylor Joy. So, you know, all, right. all, all for me. Erich is fine with that. He doesn't, no interest in the North Man waifu. It looks like a, an alien. Yeah, it's part of the appeal. <laughs> <laughs> I like that her eyes are in opposite hemispheres. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Call her up like uh, E.T. Come home. Yeah. Now, Erich, we answered a a variation of this question last episode, but this is uh, really widening the pool here. Harvey wants to know, I want to know y'all's taste in Kino. Top five movies of all time. Gun to your head. Hopefully that's easier than thinking of the top movies of the last five years. Let's think about this. Uh, I'm definitely going to have Barry Lyndon on there. Have not seen it. Fucking great movie. I'm trying to think here. Top five of all time. Yeah. Uh, the Master. Uh, have one of my not favorite seen movies. It. Um, three more. 
Empire Strikes Back, I'll just I put have my seen Star that Wars one. on there. Yeah. Um two more. Well, while Everidge is thinking, Eggy, do you have uh, any ready on your list? Yes. Um, so I'm going to go with Gothic King Cobra. Oh, King the documentary? Cobra, <laughs> yeah, King Cobra JFS. Now it's a party. Uh, <laughs> Dark Side Phil down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Uh, Wings of Redemption down the rabbit hole. I don't know. Aren't there better Wings documentaries than that one? I know, but that's the eight million doc. That's the one that really set it off for me. So I'm giving okay. I'm giving it credence. Uh, but then I guess we could do the double feature June his uh, wings, his wing <laughs> uh, ones. So your top five movies of all time are <laughs> YouTube documentaries about lol cows. Listen, all I'm saying is that uh, as a critic, I can appreciate good cinema. I can appreciate what a film does right. Um, but it, it's uh, it's difficult for me to really say, you know, what is the best? Because I feel like uh, in those ways that a film can be appreciated, whether that's the direction, the score, the cinematography, the atmosphere, the production, there's so many uh, things <clears throat> to appreciate that are very uh, highly acclaimed uh, in a period of time, and many have lasted uh, the test of time in regards to what they have done right, and forever and always, they will have those marks, but I feel that you know, um, yeah. you think Hollywood could do better because these YouTubers are really, you know, doing it <laughs> much better than they are. <laughs> All right, I've got my other two. Okay, uh, Inside Lewin Davis, have not seen, and it. uh, fuck, I wanted to do some kind of animated thing, but now I can't remember any fucking animated movie. Toy Story 4, <laughs> the worst of Cars the four. Three. Cars, cars 3. Wow! <laughs> Bold take considering last week you said you had not seen any Cars movie. Uh, I've answered this question like, like 5,000 times because, you know, as a YouTuber, people are always asking this. So most people already know my answers, but uh, in no particular order, it's got to be Back to the Future. And I guess I count the entire trilogy as one movie. Shouldn't, but I do. I'm surprised you didn't say Lord of the Rings, E-Rich. I should have said I should have said Twin Peaks: uh, The Return, mm. which is an 18 episode season of TV. Yeah, that's about as good as Cars Three. <laughs> I gotta go. Uh, I know it's uh, maybe a pleb, you know, Zoomer oh, take. Oh, Mulholland Drive, rather than fucking okay. Cars Three, Mulholland Drive. Also, have not seen that one. <laughs> uh, I I got Interstellar and Inception up there. I think they're gonna share a spot. Because uh, I like them both equally. And wow, just... you're really, really stretching out the... Uh... I know, I'm telling you, it's pleb takes, okay? Like, the most popular yeah. movies ever made are some of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, the Never-Ending Story, it's got to be up there. Inglorious Bastards, my favorite Tarantino mm. movie. And one of my favorite movies of all time. And fuck it, let's throw Donnie Darko in there, too. So the most, wow. the most pleb, you know, top 30 IMDb take you could ever have. Those are my top films of all time. Why are you oh. wearing that bunny suit? <laughs> yeah, why are you, you wearing that human suit? <laughs> you haven't seen Mulholland Drive, is that correct? Did I hear that correctly? That is correct. Mm. Should we Kino that one next week? I would be happy to do so. Now, that's something I could really sink my teeth into. Yeah, I actually um, was... Uh, I walked Mulholland Drive, the real Mulholland Drive in Los Angeles, uh, when I was out there uh, shooting for the Pepe the Frog movie. Were you oh, saying shit. this is nothing like the movie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mostly it was just for like uh, I, you know, I was familiar with the film, and I just kind of, you know, we we, we were driving um, between a couple locations, and I we drove past it. I think actually, uh, I, there's a picture of me standing overlooking a hillside, and it, that was near there. It wasn't directly uh, adjacent, I don't think, but. Um, I have a picture that I used for a song uh, a few years ago. But anyways, uh, yeah, we were just driving and I saw the sign and I'm like, ah, you know, these guys are like film guys. The one, the producer for the Pepe the Frog movie he produced uh, My Friend Dahmer. So these guys, you know, they had a little bit of, they, their feet were wet in the in the scene a little bit. And I just like soy face and pointed out, I'm like, pull over. And then we just kind of chilled and did a little walking around. But yeah, true story. But yeah, we definitely should do a is it Kino on that. And also my final point in regards to this question, I would consider those YouTube documentaries. Those are like, you know, 
party vacations, cruises, something just like that sticks in your mind. And those are like standout flings that stay with you, really have an impact. I would say cinema to me is more like a marriage that, you know, it's um, there's things that pull you in that catch your attention and you you're really going in for a lifetime of ups and downs but you know what you like and you know what you appreciate and that's always with you it might not be those standout flings those standout bursts but you're always going to be able to know what you are there for Erich, do you concur that we will rejoin together soon to review Mulholland Drive I I hope I hope we do that okay uh is it Kino is booked for all of uh, October, so maybe we should save that for November. Lynch November. We, yeah, it, we'll do we'll do that movie in November, and then we'll review Black Panther two three times, and that'll fill up all of November. <laughs> That's what right. a great month! Holy yeah. Sh- uh, next, we have Riley who wants to know a uh, fuck Mary kill, and the options are each other, Rusty Cage, and Florian Himsel. I know, uh, Everett, you don't really know Rusty that well, so you could just uh, throw me and Eggy in instead of Rusty. Yeah, kill Florian, fuck <laughs> Eggy, marry uh, Monkey. See, I I think you always have to marry whoever is richest, and then you can kill them after. Like, oh. my plan would be marry Florian, and then, uh-oh, oh, did this Austrian <laughs> man fall down the stairs without being pushed? Shifty eyes, shifty <laughs> eyes. Uh, and then I inherit all that ball frog money, and I'll be, you know, sitting pretty, so I, I will marry Florian. Um, and when it comes to fucking and killing between, I guess, Eggy and Rusty, hmm... Hmm. I don't know. Eggy, would you rather be killed by me or fucked by me? I guess I'll let you choose. Well, uh, you know, uh, obviously, uh, fuck sickos YouTube, uh, but I, I would rather probably... It's, it's a, you know... It's a rough one. Like, I think yeah. most women have to think about it, too. Like, would I rather fuck <laughs> monkey or die? And it is a tough choice. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm going to go with that uh, I would rather be fucked than killed. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Well, I guess Rusty has his guillotine ready, so the killing method is right there. Uh, what about you, Iggy? Are you going to copy my answers? Uh, well, that pretty much. I was thinking, uh, kill Florian, marry Rusty, <laughs> and uh, and fuck you guys. Oh, wow, I, guess, cool. I, I guess I guess we're all I guess we're all like in, is I guess one we're running a train on each other. Yeah. <laughs> and it's gonna be bros too for real for real. And, and <laughs> all three of us agreed that you know by the end of this, Florian will be killed. So wow. shout out to Florian. He did post a question. Let's see what he wants to know. A uh, Florian Squid wants to know: Would Eggie eat a smaller version of himself that is fully <laughs> sentient? <laughs> Great question. I mean, would I want to? No. Uh, you know, what if, if it, it was, was on a- the wheel and you landed on it, and you, you're going to get a whole point for it? You know, there's not many things that I would do to lose a YouTube eating competition, <laughs> but cannibalism, I think, is one where I would probably be willing to let that one slide. I would be willing to not. So on the next wheel, if you can somehow put humans that are alive, uh, of age, non non-related and uh, consenting on the wheel, you know what? You guys might win that one. Well, I don't know. If it's yourself, there's got to be some aspect of consent, even because it, it's like uh, just like a smaller clone of you. If in Rick and Morty, when Beth is having sex with the other version of Beth, you know, I don't think that's necessarily incest. It's more of masturbation. So surely cannibalizing yourself would be a OK, right? Well, I consider any and all of those uh, mentioned activities to be an abomination before the Lord. <laughs> Therefore... I'm going to go ahead and I would I would pass on eating or fucking a clone of myself. What about you, Erich? Would you eat a small sentient version of Eggy? Of Eggy? I thought it was going to be of myself. Well, e- either yeah, or. I'd eat a little Eggy. Well, both. You'd eat a little uh, yeah. Eggy? Which part of him? <laughs> because, well, all of them. Because oh, okay. Because here's the thing. I don't, I think they're atrocious uh, abominations. And I think they should be removed from existence but miniature clones yeah yeah he's yeah. not gonna live like a fulfilling or happy life you might as well put him out of his misery <laughs> it would freak me out too much and i'd yeah. be like that's yeah, what my teacher it. said about the real me <laughs> <laughs> uh steve buskeminian wants to know if you uh if we owned Bush a restaurant 
If we owned a Eat restaurant together, what would it be called and what would we serve? I would imagine, Aggie, our restaurant would mostly serve monkey bread and omelets, and the only drink on the menu is just pure Everclear, but did you have any other <laughs> ideas? Um, hmm. It does sound pretty good. I think that uh, if I was going to seriously open a restaurant, I'm not sure if I would exactly have it be egg themed, but the way that I would go about it, I think this is the secret to success in the restaurant industry nowadays. So listen up, all my fellow aspiring restaurateurs. I have a menu with like five things that you can just do really good and just push that. Just market only that. Just be like, all right, yeah, you want to go eat, you know, 800 different shitty half decent edible things at you know the diner that they just have you know like boxes of shit that's been sitting in the freezer for the last 10 years or you're gonna get this one thing that i do really good i mean you don't go to burrito loco to get uh you know fried rice or you know to get some sweet and sour chicken you know you go certain places for certain things i'm looking up with that artisanal fresh daily it's gonna be like three options but that's what's up that might explain why I've never had a good meal at the Cheesecake Factory, because their menu's like 40 pages, and there's no way yeah. the chef is an expert in all of those entrees. What about what? you, E. Rich? Uh, what would you serve if you had your own restaurant? Homemade macaroni and cheese. Just craft? Just out of the box? No, no. Oh. <laughs> you, make it, you make it from scratch. Okay. Yo, there is a place called Macubana here, and they do like $12 oh. bowls of macaroni. It's like gourmet. Uh, me and Eggie have eaten it a few times. I think it's good, but yeah. you know, I, I feel like just like a bowl of Kraft macaroni might you know, be as good, if not better. I don't know. How much would you charge for the bowl of Kraft macaroni? I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know if I can legally sell. Like, is are you allowed to do that? Just make Kraft macaroni and sell it to people at a restaurant? I don't think there's anything saying you can't. Yeah, I think Perkins might have that on the kids' menu. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wouldn't charge anything. I wouldn't sell that. Wow. Okay. And I would just be selling monkey you know, monkey bread and banana bread. And, <laughs> you know, any bread that, you know, monkey feces bread, anything <laughs> bread and monkey related. Uh, we've got a bunch more questions, but we're a little over time. So should we just find one more good one? Yeah. Let's wrap it up. Go. Uh... What wheel uh, M wants to know what wheel based game show ideas do we have in mind for the future? Now we did say at the end of Wheel of Curse Meals 5 it would be the last one and we would have to come up with something else. Uh is this the time for brainstorming, Aggie? Do we have any other wheel based videos in mind? Hmm. Well, we could you know it'd be kind of fun. Uh you know, this is the gamer in me speaking out here. We could uh have like the wheel, wheel of racial slurs, and you have to, <laughs> if you land on it, you got to shout it out loud on camera. Well, that's pretty, that's a good idea, too. Uh, that could be like how uh, on certain slot machines or whatever, if you have like, if you hit the bonus, there's like a secondary bonus wheel. Uh, but I was oh, thinking shit. more along, along the lines of like, uh, like, think of some gaming challenges, maybe like, you know, uh, speed running challenges, maybe like the most popular speed run games. Like, if you land on it, you have to, like, speed run it in, like, uh, at least, you know, within 200% of the time of the top speed run. I know it sounds a little out there, and it might be hard to string together a coherent video with, with that going <laughs> on, but I think, you know, I've been really itching for uh, some gamer business lately. With, that uh, might be you know, a fun stream idea, is, uh, like, we're on stream, and whatever game it lands on, we have to, like, beat it as quickly as possible before we go to the next one. Because, yeah, I don't know how that would work as a video. Because that would be like, a what, an eight-hour-long video having this run all these <laughs> games that we're probably not very good at? Well, we could just, you know, I mean, people, they might have to just take... I mean, I, if we're going to make a video about it, I guess we could fraud it, but I feel like, you know, why not... I, I personally would be down to give it a, a real authentic try and then just, you know, basically be like, oh, it's currently this time and I'm starting and then just kind of have, you know, certain, you know, just condensed cuts of uh the situation but we could yeah, just force uh, rusty cage to get off his lazy ass and come up here and we could just do wheel of punishment three that sounds good too yeah yeah you know, tried and true formula the the groundwork's already been laid good excuse yes, for me to repost videos i made four years ago and to get the <laughs> ad revenue all over again but e rich right. uh in your you know your mind bank here do you have any yeah. great ideas yeah. for us for these wheel uh, videos 
Wheel Wheel of the Worst spelled W U R S T and you make disgusting sausages. Yeah, just brought and then you have to eat the sausages. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like you make you make sausages out of crazy shit rather than actual sausages. Yeah. Is there like a, an at home machine you could do where you just like shove anything you want in there and it puts yeah. it in a sausage skin? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we could do that. That'd be horrendous. <laughs> Let's see here. If I look, if I go on to Amazon, what is Amazon's choice for sausage stuffer? I'm not even seeing any of them saying Amazon's choice, but if I'm looking at <laughs> bestseller, it looks like um, how much money are we talking? Well, they're kind of variable. I guess if we got a uh, sausage attachment for a KitchenAid, which I think those are kind of I think KitchenAids are pretty expensive. They're kind of high quality, so maybe I'll get that for. Uh, get you that for a christmas gift or something oh boy but the sausage or the gr- grinding and stuffing attachment itself is 44 dollars on sale okay i mean we spent about half that much just on everclear so you know these videos are not often cheap uh yeah. patreon.com slash monkey by the way <laughs> but it looks uh, like I... standalone sausage stuffer is up to seven to twelve pounds uh re- looking at about 150 dollars oh, okay. here well yeah, maybe uh, Everidge will have to fly in to eat some sausage with us. I'd be willing to invest $150 into a sausage maker, I will say that. Everidge, you coming down for this since it's your idea? Uh-oh, did we lose Everidge? <laughs> uh, can you hear me? Yeah. It'll have to be a fucking uh, attractive offer to <laughs> to bring me down. What about if uh, this upcoming summer, so we, we have about, you know, over half a year to think about it. If uh-huh. if the Des Moines area does another 48 hour film festival, will you come back for that and you, me and Aggie can make a fucking short film? That, that sounds amazing actually. Yeah, we should do that. We need to start doing those again. I, I keep that. doing these short film contests for my fans and it's like, you know, I'm so removed from it now. I'm not making any short films myself. I need to throw myself back out there to prove I'm still the the king of the game here. And how can I judge yeah. these people's films if I'm not making them myself? Right. So true. I think, you know, us three with our mind palaces put together and 48 hour deadline, we could probably make some Kino. We could do something good. Mm hmm. I think that's it for this episode. Did you guys have any final things you wanted to say or anything you wanted to plug? Nah, I'm done. <laughs> Time Make to go. sure you go check out the new hit song. It's taking the world by storm. Hard men working hard featuring egg white. Get the bags. That's right. The song about being a secret agent tasked with uh, going on a mission to get Abigail Shapiro's stored breast milk and everyone's loving it. It's getting plenty of upvotes. Make sure to check it out. Yeah, I'll have a link in the description to that. And if you would like to watch the behind the scenes of Wheel of Cursed Meals 5, the Patchy's Wife Cut will be out on this channel tomorrow, but it's currently unlisted. I'll have a link to that in the description. You can go watch it early. And I think that's it for this Treehouse podcast. Guys, thank you for climbing all the way up here to hang out with me. Yeah, nice to be here. A pleasure, as always. Uh, peace. Peace.